In this piano tutorial, I want to share a gospel progression that I was practicing. It comes from a very popular gospel song. And I really like this progression because it helps us with different grace notes, as well as different gospel, very popular gospel movements, as well as different voicings for passing chords that we can incorporate into our, our daily playing. Okay. And this one is in the key of E flat major. And it sounds something like this. So as you may have guessed that this is from the song, Oh Lord, how excellent. And let's get into the different movements, different chords that we are using within this progression. Okay. So one of the first things that I like doing is trying to maintain that melody within the progression. So as you can see or hear, um, you could tell what song it was based on how I was playing it. You can hear the, the melody with um, outstanding throughout all of the chords. Okay, so we start off on that one chord, which is E major or sorry, E flat major. And the way I'm voicing this chord is by not just playing a bass note in my right hand, but actually playing a whole chord, which is in this case, E flat major as a drop two voicing. So the one the five, then the 10 or the three, right? So, and I'm just playing with these middle note, middle notes to create some movement or rhythm within the chord. Now, in this case, I like using grace notes to sort of um, mimic uh, an actual voice that would be singing the song. So I'm using this grace note right here where I'm basically playing F back to G back to F and then E flat. So, so, oh, It sounds really nice in, in context. So for the second chord, we're playing a B flat over D, which is a five over a seven. As you can see, I'm still including that drop to voicing in my left hand to sort of fill up the chord a little bit more. Still creating some movement within the chord. Now this chord right here, is basically just an E flat seven, but we're playing it over the the minor seven, right? Over that C or that D flat, okay? And we're voicing it in this way right here, okay? So, now in this case, the next chord is actually one of my favorite within the progression because it's very, very influenced by by gospel. Right. And it includes some diminished chords, some minor six or half diminished chords. Right. Right. This E diminished seventh chord is the first chord in this section, and it's being used to approach the two. Right. So this E diminished seventh can be learned as a passing chord to play before a two chord right and you can even voice it like this if your left hand can reach right so it's a How excellent. and i also really like it because you can hear the melody even be even within this passing chord right How we land on that two, which is an F minor 11. And then we actually invert 
this initial passing chord, right? So E diminished seventh to the two, then we invert it to this G diminished seventh, which actually has the same exact notes as the E diminished seventh, right? And then we're actually going to use this chord as a passing chord to approach this A flat minor six, right? Very gospel right? And something cool about this chord is that it sort of doubles as an F half diminished, right? But when we add that A flat to the bass or the left side, um, it becomes an A flat minor six, right? Or four minor six. So we have so far. Right, very gospely, and as you guessed it, the next chord is going to be a five, right? This is basically just a walk up. Sorry. And we land on this one over five, which is just an E flat over B flat. And then from here, the next chord is actually going to be a six, but we're going to use a passing chord to get there, so. We're going to use this G7 sharp five, which is basically just the secondary dominant of the six or the five of the six, which is C. So the five of C is G. And instead of just playing a regular six, right, a C minor seven, we're actually going to voice it as a suspended chord. In this case, a C 13 sus. And this chord right here, there's a bunch of different ways of thinking about it. Since I'm playing it in two different hands, I like thinking about it as a C sus4, 7, or C7 sus4. Right? We have the C, the, the minor 7th, and then the sus4, which would be the 4 and the 5. In the left hand and then the right hand, we have a D minor 7. It can also be thought, at, thought about as a B flat major nine over a C sus four. Okay. And that chord right there is not going to stay there, right? We're actually going to resolve it to a C seven flat nine. So we can also resolve it to a C seven flat nine sharp five, right? As you can see the difference in the notes, um, when we resolve it, the left hand simply goes to a C7, and the right hand is going to take the D minor within the chord, right? D, F, and A, and bring it down to a C sharp diminished, right? Or it can be brought down to a C sharp minor. So it would be in combination either this or this. Then the next chord, right? This chord right here is acting as a passing chord to the two, all right? Before we use this chord as a passing chord to the two, but now we have another option. We have this right here, right? And it leads us to the two in this case, which is an F minor 11 once again. In this case, I'm just playing around with the melody. I'm basically just following the melody and incorporating a either a major or a minor third or a diatonic third um, with the actual melody. So all together, it would be we start on the two. Then we play this interval right here. And we just go down the major scale, the E flat major scale with both notes, all right? So So and actually play a grace note with both of them would be It's a little bit quick, right? So all together with both hands
that's basically the whole progression and what i want to do now is play it throughout and i'll also include a midi file in the description and quick reminder i have a piano course available teaching 11 gospel jazz progressions that you can learn at your own pace and in every key okay so let's get started with this progression <laughs> 